In the mid-1980s, the IBM PC and many clones had two drive bays and two floppy drives. So if you wanted to add a hard drive, that meant sacrificing one of your floppy drives. And if you did have the original IBM PC, you would also need to upgrade the power supply because the stock IBM unit didn't have enough current to handle most hard drives. And then of course you needed to add the drive controller card, some cables. Instead of all this mess, wouldn't it be so much easier if installing a hard drive was as simple as installing an expansion card? Well, that's exactly what the Plus Development Corporation, a subsidiary of the hard drive manufacturer Quantum, thought in 1985 when they invented the hard card. We'll begin by looking at an incredible new device that's a hard disk on a card, and it's called the hard card. With hard card, uh, anyone who uses the PC can install it in about 10 minutes. Uh, so it's very easy to install. We've been able to reduce the size of hard card to, uh, to a single IBM expansion slot. To install it, all you need to do is remove your PC's cover, remove one of the expansion slot brackets, and pop in the hard card. Then just tighten down the retaining screw and you're ready to go. The first hard card, which was introduced in 1985, had a capacity of 10 megabytes and a list price of $1,095. And I've never seen one of those, so I don't think they sold very many. But the next model, introduced in 1986, was a runaway success. The Hard Card 20. It not only had double the capacity of the original hard card, it also had a lower price, $895, and also had about half the power consumption, drawing only 8 watts of power instead of 14. Of course, like any good idea, other companies started making knockoffs of it almost immediately. Those included the Mountain Computer Drive Card, the Western Digital File Card, the Tandon Disk Card, and the Systine PhD. By 1986, there were over 30 companies making hard drives on a card. You could even buy a kit to make your own hard card out of any 3.5 inch hard drive and short length ISA controller card. And hard cards were not just in PCs. Commodore introduced the A2091 hard card for desktop Amiga computers. The Plus Development Corporation was granted a patent for the hard card in 1987, but the only part of that patent they were able to enforce was the innovation of truly integrating the hard drive into the card and making it thin enough to fit into a single expansion slot. So if you compare the hard card with the hard disk card that Tandy sold, maybe you can tell by the size of the box that it's a lot thicker. So they couldn't stop other companies from making hard drive cards, but none of them could be as thin as the original hard card. So unlike its chunky competitors, the hard card will fit neatly between two full length expansion cards with room to spare. even in an XT where the slots are closer together than in this PC. Just one thing you need to be careful of when installing a hard card is this metal tab here. That's designed to fit into one of the plastic guides in the front of the case. So you really have to make sure that these things are installed in your case to properly support the hard card as you install it. Unlike other hard drive controllers, which often had a multitude of jumpers to configure, there's only one jumper on the hard card. It's labeled PC and XT. In the PC position, the hard card is the primary hard drive because the original IBM PC did not come off a hard drive. So installing this would be your primary hard drive. And in the XT position, this would be the secondary hard drive because the XT did come with a hard drive, which you could keep in place when you added this, which would then become your secondary hard drive. I also have the original manual that came with the hard card. And while I was able to find an archive of the software that came with it, I was not able to find a copy of the manual. So I'll scan this one in and I'll include a link in the description if you want to download it. The drive in the hard card was made by Matsushita, 
and I believe it was the first one inch high three and a half inch hard drive which is the same form factor used by modern hard drives and just like modern hard drives it is a voice coil design instead of using a stepper motor and has automatic drive head parking which makes it immune to temperature variations and damage during transport. Unfortunately, they are not immune to age-related failure, and it seems like most hard cards are no longer functional. But luckily, this one is still working, so I'll give you a sample of what it sounds like starting up. When I first boot up the PC with the hard card installed, it says bad or missing command interpreter, but that's not unexpected because when I first got the hard card, the jumper was in the XT position, indicating it was installed as a secondary hard drive, and thus the partition on it is not bootable. But if I boot up using a floppy disk, I can access the C drive, which is the hard card. And there you can see some of the files and directories that were on it from its previous owner, including copies of Lotus 123, Multimate, and Windows 3.0. For example, here is starting up Multimate, which was a word processor. And you can see it was licensed to Michael Bulkley at Westinghouse Electric. But I have no interest in going through 30 year old personal files, so I'm just going to delete the partition on the hard card. Create a new DOS partition. And now I'm going to format it. And one thing you may have noticed is the flashing plus symbol in the upper right corner of the screen, which indicates the drive activity because there is no visible drive access indicator LED through the front panel of the computer. This was an optional feature that the hard drive on a card came with to indicate when it's being accessed. And it looks like we have some bad sectors. So we'll see how good this drive still is after 35 years. There it finished formatting. It's only about 51K in bad sectors, which I don't think is too bad. And I'm not worried about that because I don't trust any computer equipment this old to store any irreplaceable files. And there is the hard card booting up. And it has almost 21 megabytes free. It's quite a bit faster than the original hard drive that the IBM XT came with, about one and a half times faster. And here's something unusual. Maybe you could see that I just tried to use that diagnostic program to check the interleave of the hard card and it popped up this message saying that a low level format operation has been attempted and this operation has been interrupted so no data or media defect information would be lost. So this is the hard card intervening to make sure I don't screw things up. I'm doing a scan disk surface scan on it and it did not find any more bad sectors on it than the original format did. So at least for now, this drive should be reliable. In case you're curious like I was, the hard card 20 uses an interleave of three to one, which is really the best you can do on a PC or XT running at 4.77 megahertz. And as for using the hard card 20 in a 286 or higher machine, it is possible if you have the BIOS upgrade that they made available in December 1986. But in addition to that BIOS upgrade, you would also need a motherboard with an 8-bit ISA slot. Because you may have noticed that this metal frame physically blocks it from being installed into a 16-bit slot. In 1987, Plus Development Corporation introduced a 40 megabyte hard card. Then in late 1989, they introduced the hard card 2, which has a 16-bit AT bus interface. 
It was available in capacities of 40 and 80 megabytes and has a one-to-one -one interleave and a 64K cache to improve disk access speed. Then in 1990, they followed that with the HardCard 2 XL with capacities of 50 and 105 megabytes. And finally, in 1992, they introduced the HardCard EZ and it was available in capacities of 42, 85, 127, or 240 megabytes. I think it was the release of MS-DOS 6 in 1993 which turned out to be the death knell of the hard card because consumers who were running low on disk space were more likely to be enticed by its promise of doubling their hard drive capacity using its included double space disk compression software even if it turned out to be notoriously unreliable. Unfortunately these days hard cards are also notoriously unreliable especially these older 8-bit models. That's because there's a rubber component inside the drive which becomes sticky with age and eventually the drive heads get stuck to it and then the drive no longer works. It is actually possible to repair these hard cards and there are several tutorial videos on how to do that but it's a delicate process which involves opening up the drive, removing the perished rubber component and replacing it and unless you have a clean room which most people don't once you open up a hard drive you make it prone to dust contamination which can cause a head crash so even if you're able to fix that problem and get the drive working again it still may not be reliable in the long term so for now i'm just going to keep using this hard card as is because luckily this one still is working and hopefully is going to stay that way for a while longer.